Hello everybody, welcome back to our channel. In this episode, we're going to be solving a Physics 7C practice problem on the topic of wave interference. As usual, if you're finding this content helpful, please make sure to leave a like, it really helps promote our channel. So this is the problem that we're going to be working with, uh, the uh, Rossler problem, and the problem goes like this. So a radio station transmits at about 1070 kilohertz from two tower space 140 meters apart and located to the north of Rosler Hall by uh, <clears throat> 1400 meters and 1540 meters as shown to the right. Each tower emits a radio wave in all directions, though for this problem you need to only consider the transmission in the uh, specific direction to Rosler. As a result of the transmission, the entrance to Rosler receives a radio transmission of constant maximal amplitude. That part's important. So the first thing that we have to do is explain what must be happening at the entrance of Rosler Hall and how the different quantities in the wave equations for each tower compare relative to each other. And we have to use a phase chart. Then for the second part, uh, we need to consider different locations uh, between the towers and Rosler Hall, so within that line, and then for the third one, we need to find a different frequency, but we'll get there when we get there. Okay, so as you can see, I have everything uh, written down over here, so I have my north, south, and then I have Rosler over here. I have the um, this thing that they were asking for, so let's just go ahead and start filling it out. So first of all, first answer to A, which is what must be happening at the entrance to Rosler Hall. Well, the answer is that if Rosler is always receiving constant maximal amplitude, that means that um, we have constructive interference. So whatever's happening over here, even though I haven't filled anything, you know, the result needs to be a multiple of 2 and pi over here. Now, um, another thing that I know, that, go, baby. Another thing that I know is that um, the frequency of both of them, which I didn't write, but let me just look at the problem. Kilohertz, and I can get a lambda from this. So lambda from this, would be, um, you know, velocity divided by frequency. These are radio towers, so we are actually dealing with the speed of light over here, so three times 10 to the eight meters per second, and then this is kilohertz, so I would just do three zeros, right? Take away the kilos. So let's put this on a calculator. So um, three times 10 to the eight divided by, one zero seven zero 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 and that is two hundred and eighty meters. Two hundred and eighty meters. Okay, so we have two hundred and eighty meters over here. And um so what I'm gonna do now is just start filling this out. This part over here doesn't really matter in this problem because both of them have the exact same frequency, which means that, you know, they have the same frequency, they have the same period, and both of them are arriving at Rosler at the same time. So this is just going to be a zero, so I don't really have to fill that in. Now for the second part, so this is north. So north is over here, so this will be negative 2 pi over 280 and then the distance in meters would be this number plus this number so 1400 plus 140 right so 1540 and then for this guy which is south i'm gonna go ahead and do the same but this distance is just going to be this distance because this is the south. So 
so one four zero zero and then if i do north minus south which as usual it doesn't matter you just have to pick one and just make sure that this is uh consistent then what i'm gonna get is um negative 2 pi 280 and then i did north versus south so this number minus this number is just going to be 140 like this now in terms of their uh, faces i actually don't have any idea at the moment what their faces are so i'm just gonna do zero um i'm just gonna call it north and i'm just gonna call it south and then this is just north minus south. And we actually have to figure out what, what happens over here, right? So now I'm just going to write my uh, equation that I got to see what this relationship must be. So let's see. So if I write my equation, I'm just going to write it as it is. And then I'm just going to simplify it over here. And then this simplifies, right? Because two times 140 is 280. So this is actually just negative pi. So north minus south needs to be um, two pi n plus pi like this. which means that, uh, you know, at this point, we just start substituting values. So I think that we can just do like one, like two of them, and then we'll see the relationship. So for n is equal to zero, this guy is just pi. For n is equal to 1, we have 3 pi. And then you can see that as we go upwards or even downwards on n, our uh, relationship between these two guys, the subtraction, is always going to be a multiple of pi. Uh, and not just a multiple, but it's 1, 3, 5. So I'm actually going to add here that this is always a, an odd multiple of pi. And because this is an odd multiple of pi, then the speakers are connected. Um, so they aren't in phase, they are out of phase. And in 7c, uh, we call that wire opposite. wire opposite and this will be my final answer for part a so now part b <coughs> so this this is always going to be two a multiple of this so now uh for the second part says consider now a different locations along the path between rosler hall and the southernmost transmission tower so basically any point over here. Will the different locations have constant maximal amplitude or are there different locations with different types of interference? Again, a phase chart may, may help organize your thinking. I'm not going to do another phase chart because this problem is sort of like straightforward because when you think about it, what is this 1400 doing for us? It's actually not doing so much for us because what matters is not the distance over here, but the distance between both of the towers. Because let's just say that, you know, I'm at like, you know, 500. So if I'm at 500, then this distance is going to be 500 plus 140. This distance is going to be 500. And then the difference is going to be this. If I'm at a thousand, this is going to be a thousand plus 140 is going to be a thousand and the difference is going to be this. So delta x stays the same. 
regardless of uh you know where we are specifically this one could have been like way farther down or like way up and it would be the same because at the end of the day when you have like this problem like not like this what matters is this distance delta is always going to come down to 140 so therefore um so you're always gonna have constant maximal amplitude final answer um that's just because delta x isn't changing and you know these ones we are messing with them they are fixed now that we found them so that's that's basically what's up and now for part c it says find one other frequency that the towers could use to produce constant maximal amplitude at the location of rosler hall okay so basically what this problem is saying is hey i gave you this one frequency that gives you a uh, constant maximal amplitude can you find another one of course we can so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna rewrite uh this equation over here and i'm just gonna do it for you know for part c we use a different color perhaps let's go with um this one So I'm not going to do the entire chart again, but basically for this part over here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this, but instead of having the 280, I'm going to write lambda because that's what I'm trying to find. But regardless of what lambda is, this distance is the same. So I don't really have to like do that again, right? So all I have to do is instead of putting the one that they gave me, I'm going to try and find a new one. Now for these guys over here, you basically get to pick, you know, whatever you want. <clears throat> In my case, I'm just gonna go ahead and do pi because that's the first one that comes out. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do uh, plus pi. And then we still want constructive interference. So we still want this to be two and pi like this. And now basically we just select an n. I'm not gonna do n is equal to zero because if I do n is equal to zero, this goes away, this goes as negative pi, and then I get the lambda of uh, the original lambda of 280. So what I'm gonna do instead is, um, you know, maybe do lambda is equal to, if I'm not gonna do zero, let's just do for n is equal to one. See what we get. Um, so if n is equal to 1, this is negative 2, um, 80 pi divided by lambda, and then this is equal to 2 pi minus pi, so this is equal to 1 pi. Oh no, this one's the one that gives me the exact same number because, yeah, so 2 and pi... Then this goes, this is pi, pi cancel out, and then I get my um, lambda. Okay, so this one didn't work. I mean, it did work. It just gave me the 280 from before, so this one's no good. So maybe let's just go ahead and do the next one. I mean, we just have to find one. If we find one, then, you know, the quiz is done at this point. So, uh, so this would be negative 280 pi over lambda, and then if n is equal to two, this is four, this goes negative, so this is three pi, like this. So that means that, and this is 80. So lambda would be, um, oh, and we could also, I'm gonna get a negative number. So that means that maybe we should try getting a positive one because I want to have a negative frequency. So what happens if we try minus two here? If we do minus two, then this is negative four pi. 
So this is negative 5 pi over here. So this would be So lambda in this case would be fifty six, and this would give me a frequency of speed of light three times ten to the eight, and then I would divide by lambda, so like divided by fifty six, so five point three times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 5.3 times 10 to the 6, and this is hertz. So this would be a good final answer for part C. So be a good final answer for part C. I had to use a negative number. Um, again, once you get to this point over here, once you pick whatever you want over here, once you select this, then it's just a matter of literally finding one that works, whichever number you want. Um, in my case, I selected a pi over here, positive pi. I could have the minus pi that's also multiple, and then that would give me you know, a different frequency, it would still be a correct final answer because at the end, everything needs to uh, add up. But depending on your little equation is the uh, ends that you're going to be able to use. So in my case, I wanted a positive uh, frequency because, you know, a positive frequency means a positive time. And, you know, we do like our times to be positive. We really like going into the negatives when it comes to time. But that's just a personal preference, honestly. Um, so whatever you do, whatever works for you, that's fine. Just substitute something, find a different number, and then just that's your final answer. There are literally an infinite amount of final answers for part C because there are an infinite amount of combinations that you can do. So long as your final answer, you know, so long as you put this equation and substitute something, then that's, that's fine. So anyways, this is uh, the final result for this quiz. I hope you guys found this uh, useful. If you did, please make sure to leave a like. It really helps uh, promote our channel. And I'll see you guys on the next video.